Good Sunday evening, everyone. I'm Fletcher Mackle, and this is a special New Orleans Pelicans edition of the WDSU Hot Seat. Joined this evening by David Grubb. He covers the Pelicans for SportsNola.com and Ali Cosell, the editor and, I guess, publisher or chief executive of the website TheBirdWrites.com. Thanks for joining us this evening. Let's jump right into it. The annual NBA draft is on Thursday night. It's less meaningful for the Pelicans because they traded their first round draft pick to the Sacramento Kings as part of the DeMarcus Cousins deal. David, we'll start with you. Do you expect anything at all to happen on draft night, them trading back into the first round, them potentially trading a player, or will we all be there just eating pizza and drinking soft drinks all night? I think there'll be plenty of phone calls made. Um, this is a highly volatile draft, a lot of teams with a lot of picks. Um, I don't know what the Pelicans really have in terms of assets to give up to get back into this draft, but there may be uh, pieces at play. Uh, teams looking to get up in the second round if, they, if there's a player that they want to identify, but I think the phones will be very active. I think Dell Demps will be uh, talking to a lot of teams. I agree with David. I don't expect any action, mainly because the draft pick represents a rookie, and therefore that's going to take adjustment, development, all the above, for at least a couple years that the Pelicans do not have that time for. They've got DeMarcus Cousins already here. He's here for just one more year, possibly. they got to make it happen now. Let me, let me get to Drew holiday right now and David what looking into your crystal ball do you think will happen with Drew Holiday will the Pelicans give him a deal at almost 30 million per year to keep him here in New Orleans maybe sign his brother who's also a free agent who just played with the New York Knicks or do you think Drew Holiday may say there's there's greener pastures for me what do you think is going to happen with Drew Holiday and then please jump in because Holiday is going to be a lot of what we talk about this evening and I think obviously the biggest thing with Drew is value you. Mm -hmm. um, clearly the, the team has indicated that they want to keep him but it's going to be hard to justify with the, the holes that they still have on the roster giving $30 million to Drew. There are two questions that the Pelicans really have to be focused on. This one year in proving yourself to DeMarcus Cousins that this is a destination you want to stay in for the next five to six years of your career and then at the same time you also have some long term flexibility issues to continue to put pieces around Davis and Cousins. $30 million for Drew really doesn't allow you to do that. So I think that they need to set a firm line in the sand. What are we willing to pay Drew Holiday? And then what are our plans B and C if that doesn't happen? I agree with David, and I think that we've actually seen that already happen. The line in the sand has been drawn because we have heard a lot of contentious reports out there, whereas uh, Drew Holiday has been feeling out the league. He's possibly thinking about leaving elsewhere, and it, it, there's this pact now going on with his brother, seemingly. It's been created where they're a package deal. So there's a lot of pressure for the Pelicans to sign him, and I don't think they're going to want to pony up because the demands may be too high. I think, just my opinion here, that if Drew Holiday is back in New Orleans, I don't see a future for this team. I don't see how the pieces fit. I think that Dell Demps and Alvin Gentry talking Drew Holiday up is a bit of a smokescreen because they may be plotting and planning a different direction. And I'd like to read you something that Jim Eichenhofer, who works for Pelicans.com, said. He did an interview with new Pelicans assistant coach Chris Finch, who was the architect of a very good Denver offense. Denver has a very good big man in Nikola Jokic. And here's what he said. I can see DeMarcus Cousins at the top of the key with the ball in his hands, creating the offense just like we did with Jokic in Denver. So if DeMarcus Cousins is going to play, for maybe lack of a better term, a point center role, does Drew Holiday want to come back to do what he did at the end of last season? Secondary facilitator, secondary kind of shooter off the ball. And do the Pelicans really invest 30 million in a player like that? I think it's hard to say that if your guy's a third banana and Drew really is, there's a drop off between your first two and your three when you're calling a, a big three of a group. Um, I think it's really hard because the things that he would do well in that situation don't really fit with those skills that DeMarcus and Anthony have. He's not a great shooter coming off screens. He's not an, uh, an exceptional penetrator. He's great at defense and he can occasionally knock down jumpers. But Drew is so streaky and we've seen it where he has streaky stretches of five, six games where he plays very well, and then games where he kind of floats. So I think his skill set doesn't really match if, if you're going to put Cousins in the high post and not let him run the offense. I agree with a lot of what David said, but the counterpoint is Drew does never, you know, he doesn't look for the limelight often. If, you, if you've ever talked to him, which everybody up here has, obviously, he's not a guy who seeks the publicity. He's not all about the glam or anything. He doesn't mind being that secondary player on, on, on the team. So I could see him accepting the role for sure. That's, let me just, not to interrupt you, but that is something Dell 
Kyle Demps said about Drew Holiday is that is why they like him because he can play the one or the two. He can play off the ball or on the ball. He has thirty million dollars. Right. That's my question. Is for that a guy a, who's willing to be a third guy? Right. Three and players. So, so let's let's million. look at this. Let's just say that Drew Holiday leaves. Maybe the Dallas Mavericks are a better fit, which I think they're probably a better fit for his skill set. Maybe he rejoins his brother in New York and his brother resigns with New York. Maybe a team like Philly jumps in, even Denver. There are, are going to be a lot of suitors for Drew Holiday, and maybe he finds a better fit uh, for his basketball future. Is there anybody on your wish list, and, and we'll start with you, Ali, that, that you say, I would love to see the Pelicans sign this guy if Drew Holiday bolted in free agency? My favorite dream scenario is George Hill from the Utah Jazz. This guy does everything that the Pelicans need. They need that defender, that lead defender on the wing, and they need the guy that can knock down a three-pointer uh, at, at, at any interval, whether he's at the top of the key or on the baseline. Now, the most likely scenario is I'm looking at Darren Collison. They're going to need a stopgap. If they can't get Drew Holiday, they're not going to be in play for the Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry. I just, because, because of money and fit and all the above, they're going to be you know, searching for that middle-tier type of point guard, or they could go for a shoot. More like a combo guard, like a Patty Mills, Mills or somebody like that. David. Yeah, I, I really like Patty Mills. I thought um, he played exceptionally well during the playoffs. He's a guy who's played in a system with bigs, uh, knows how to facilitate for guys like Lamarcus Aldridge and for Pau Gasol. So he knows how to operate there. He can uh, shoot off the ball. Um, so I really like him. I think Darren Collison again. Um, I think he is a good fit, not as a you know long-term starting solution, but again as a stopgap. Very similar skill set to Drew. In, in some ways, but a little quicker with the ball, more willing to penetrate. So, yeah, I think those are your, probably your two most likely. Do the Pelicans have to replace Drew Holiday with a point guard? I mean, couldn't they conceivably spend their money at another position and then go find, I don't want to say a lesser tier player, but maybe a cheaper option at, at point guard? Like, could they spend on, say, a J.J. Redick? This team is going to need shooting because you have Davis and Cousins and teams are going to know what they do in the paint. Don't you have to find some shooting? And, and wouldn't it be conceivable to see them potentially say, hey, if Drew's going to leave, we don't need to find a point guard if Cousins is going to facilitate the offense. We need to find a guy who we know can knock down shots. Yeah, absolutely, Fletcher. That's why I was pointing out Darren Collison, and that's why we mentioned Patty Mills. They can go ahead and get that lesser tier point guard, mainly because they've got DeMarcus Cousins at top key. They've got Anthony Davis commanding all that attention down low. If you watched Denver last year, one thing you did notice was their point guard, and their offense was well, I think it was second in the league, right? It was, and probably first after, like, December 1st. Once they got Jokic running that offense and the point guards, was it Jameer Nelson, Jamal Murray? Yeah. They didn't handle the ball. They didn't make Ooh, the yeah. plays. They yeah. just went ahead and knocked down those open jumpers. That's all that was asked of them. And look at where that offense finished, both in pace and rating. Outstanding. And I think, you know, also, yeah, they don't have to necessarily go after a big point guard because – Again, you're, you're thinking about what are you going to do with the small forward position? You know, Quincy Pondexter, the guard, that, that flex guard, um, two guard, uh, small forward position. What's Quincy Pondexter's future? What do you do with Dante Cunningham? Is he going to be back? So you still, yes, you definitely need those wing players, and you're going to have to try to find uh, money to get go after those. I am a little concerned about Alvin Gentry as the head coach because there have been reports that the Pelicans are now bringing another assistant on board, and whether or not Sam Mitchell actually comes on board if they bring a, a, a an assistant coach on that is a former head coach in the league do you think they're almost looking at a safety net situation that if we have to make a move with Alvin early we want someone with NBA head coaching experience on the bench if we have to fire Alvin we can still salvage the season with an NBA ready guy or is that reading too much into what they're doing no I mean I, th I think you know if you're the Pelicans you're thinking about this as a three-month season you know, um, you know, you go into it November, December, January, and you're trying to prove to DeMarcus Cousins, are we going to be able to compete um, legitimately in the Western Conference? So, yeah, I think there will be, you know, this is a make or break year for Demps and Gentry. We've said that before, we've thought, but with, with Cousins coming on, I think that's been, um, you know, in, enhanced. Your extension. Yeah. So, so I think, yeah, they have to be prepared to push a panic button if necessary and have someone on the bench if, the, if, if Gentry just can't get it going out of the gate. They can't afford a start like they've had each of the last two years. One thing I want to add is, though, if you remember when Gentry was with the Golden State Warriors, what they did there is Kerr was kind of the team leader, mm -hmm. and then Gentry had his uh, position. I forget the defensive uh, coordinator, but there was basically a group of minds, and they all had input. And I think maybe that's what they're looking to do here. 
Gentry can still make the final call on things, but they want to have more input from a lot of different variables because last year obviously it didn't work. So maybe they're trying to make a whole new formula. Let's, again, I asked you to look in your crystal ball and ask you, asked you all what do you think is going to happen with Drew Holiday? What do you think is going to happen with this team next season? Look, the West and even the NBA overall, the Eastern and Western conferences, it's going to be in flux this summer because so many big names could be on the move. You know, does Blake Griffin re-sign with the Clippers? Does Chris Paul re-sign with the Clippers? I mean, guys could be moving teams. Gordon Hayward could be leaving Utah. Carmelo could be traded from New York. You could see a lot of movement. Where do you think the Pelicans are capable of finishing in the Western Conference? And I know that's a difficult question because we don't know who's going to end up where, but knowing they're led by Davis and Cousins, where do you see their high watermark being, assuming that everyone is playing for second place because the Golden State Warriors are becoming the team of a generation. Yeah, Fletcher, I think playoffs are, are, are definitely in play. You've got DeMarcus Cousins, you've got Anthony Davis, you've got two of the best 15 players. I want everybody to stop talking about how we've got two big men. These are two of the best basketball players with a wide-ranging you know, skills. Mm-hmm. They can pass, they can shoot, and of course they can bang down low. So playoffs for sure, but how high they get is going to depend on all the, you know, the other ro- roster spots, how they get filled out, whether Holiday does come back. But as a high watermark, I would honestly say they could probably push for a fourth or maybe a fifth seed. I think that's possible, um, you know, again, but the, to me, it's the question with this team is always going to be what are, what is the plan? Because, like you said, Golden State right now is in a generational uh, period where they could be the team of this decade. So over the next three years, you're thinking Golden State is clearly at the top of the league. So what is your plan? Are you trying to attack Golden State now or are you trying to prepare your team to be in the elite in the next two to three years? And I don't think we really know with the Pelicans what their plan is. All right. Final question here because we're running out of time very quickly. One year from now, are we going to be sitting here talking about how disastrous Dell Demps and Alvin Gentry in this group did nothing right and they're almost back at ground zero? Or are we going to be talking about the summer of 2017 where they really turned a corner, they really put the right pieces in place, and the needle is finally pointed in the right direction for this team? Well, I'm going to say they're due. I mean, based on past history, yeah, you, you almost have to count them out. Whether it's going to be injuries that get them, some kind of bad play, some kind of bad luck. Maybe they're going to, this might be their season, you know, so I'm going to stick with it. You know, it's time for a little bit of optimism. We need it. We, the, the city needs Cousins to stay. The Pelicans need them to stay. So they've got to push the playoffs. I mean, I think this is the most critical season uh, for this franchise probably since Chris Paul was here, since the year they lost in the uh, Western Conference semifinals. So um, I think where we are next year is we're, There may be some changes, but I think the team will have progressed. I think we'll be talking about a better basketball team. I don't think it'll be as disappointing as it was this year, but I I don't think they'll make that leap into the upper echelon of the West just yet. All right. David Grubb from SportsNola.com and Ali Cosell from The Bird Rights. We appreciate your time. Back to you all on the news desk.